medical needs for the expensive choppers. Look what one walked into in the early 60s. You went into hospitals and you go in the emergency room and there wouldn't be people there. You'd have to call up on the phone to get a nurse to come down. Dr. R. Adams Kelly, the father of shock trauma, recalls the old days of treating accident victims. Can you hear me, ma'am? Beginning in 1963, the 71-year-old heart surgeon built shock trauma into the world's first and finest emergency medical services system. It was this crusty yet humorous and caring former cowboy and veteran of World War II's Battle of the Bulge who created, fought for, the golden hour. We found out that uh, there seemed to be a time period where you've got to really do something for this patient, whether he's out in the field or whether he's in transit to, to a hospital or whether he's in the hospital, you can't wait. 60 minutes. And that 60 minutes is a golden hour. The golden hour in which civilian helicopters were first used to get critically injured patients to shock trauma where expert care, more often than not, saved their lives. Now, Dr. Kelly wants to reduce the golden hour to 20 golden minutes if he can get faster, larger, but expensive state-of-the-art helicopters. But the legislature is struggling with, among other things, the more than $25 million price tag. Shock trauma today has a 90% or better survival rate for patients. What difference, realistically, what impact will it have on patients if you get these new helicopters? Number one, it's safer. We can go out in worse weather. We can uh, get people picked up and lifted regardless of the heat and summer conditions. We can take these people and move them faster, much faster. Our helicopters flow fly 90, 100 miles an hour. These fly 180. The quicker you can treat somebody in trauma, the more opportunities for survival. If it turns out that one, getting these helicopters is delayed, or two, that you don't get the kinds of helicopters you want, what impact will that have? I think it'll set back the system several years. I want the very best for the citizens of the state. I want all of them to survive, and that's my goal. And if it means getting bigger and better helicopters, I'm going to do everything I can to get them. You know, when you look at someone dead, it makes you wonder, could I have done more? You're in shock trauma, you're in the critical care unit. Try to open your eyes a little bit. You know, if you have an accident here in Maryland, you have a two and a half times greater chance of surviving that accident because of shock trauma. And that man. That's a, a very, that man. very intense uh, story, Chris. I, He's incredible. He He's, really, I, I wonder if we like, realize no, how very, lucky we are to yeah. have Let me stop being Dr. objective Trump. for a moment. I think this man, and he's been called arrogant, dictatorial, all kinds of things, but he is probably made more of a contribution to the state than anyone else I can think Nobody of. Nobody whose life he has touched has ever called him anything but a yeah. miracle man, I'm Absolutely. certain. Absolutely. We want to make sure also that uh, journalistically we mention the fact that it's it's tough. You can't put a price on a life, but this is, will cost real 26 dollars. Mil too. $26 million is a lot of money. The legislature is understandably concerned about it, but one of Dr. Kelly's points is that in the long term, it will pay off because not only will you save lives, you'll get people to shock trauma sooner, which means that their rehabilitation will go into effect sooner, that the state, the federal government will not be paying, we will not be paying as much money for rehabilitation with these patients, and that's a lot of money in the long run. Extraordinary story. This is a decision that would be made in this session, is that correct? Hopefully, the upcoming session. Hopefully. They're in an impasse now, but I think they're going to resolve it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Medical reporter Christopher Gall, thank you very much described as the politics of control. You're protecting things all the way along. It's been a continuous battle uh, with uh, trying to establish a trauma program. Dr. R. Adams Kelly is talking about his child, the world's first shock trauma system, which he conceived and raised to the point where today, the lives of more than 90% of the critically injured patients who come here 
are saved. But today, Dr. Kelly says he's in a fight to preserve the integrity of the unique institution in the face of accusations of empire building. The charges, the innuendos involving Dr. Kelly and his so-called empire building are not new. They go back to at least the early 1970s, but they resurface this week as the legislature considers the $26 million price tag for a fleet of six new shock trauma medevac helicopters. If I was going to build an empire, I sure wouldn't build it the way I did. The shock trauma system is very close to your heart. You've been very protective of it. That's true. I've lost a family. I've uh, lived in a room for 25 years. I've done all these things so I could be here. If I knew what I know now, uh, there wouldn't be a trauma system because I would not think I'd go through it again. What did I get out of it? I didn't get monetary rewards. I got a little, uh, what do you want to call it, uh, glory or whatever, but you sure can't eat it. It was a goal you set that you wanted to take care of people and you hate to see people die. And so you started devising systems to keep them alive. And now we turn around and uh, this empire building, uh, there was no empire building. We did things because of necessity. If Dr. Kelly didn't build an empire, he at least is getting a monument in the form of the near completed 138 bed, $31 million trauma center that will bear his name. Yet he fears the politics of control, an element of which he sees in the legislature's reluctance to approve the new helicopters, threatens the healthy, quality-controlled growth of trauma. He fears that this life-saving quality may become eroded. There's a tremendous chance for that to happen. Uh, we have, in many of our areas, of uh, well, the, the state, the people, uh, they don't want excellence. They're not interested in excellence. They Paul Parrot excellence. But really what they want is control. And uh, if the excellent comes with it, fine. If it doesn't, fine. We just want control. But when you've got a kid that come here, or your wife came here, or somebody came here, their lives have been saved. They look at it differently. And that's the bottom line, is it? I've talked to a lot of shock trauma patients, and of course they tell me that shock trauma is the greatest thing in the world, understandably. Chris, help us in the perspective here, the term empire building sounds like a very negative thing for anybody to do. I, this is, after all, America, but is it empire building? And if it is, is that necessarily so bad in this instance? Not necessarily. I don't think it's empire building in Dr. Kelly's case. He's a very strong leader. There's no question about that. He, wants what he wants and he usually gets it, but it took a strong man, in fact, a strong woman, following Liz Scanlon, who's the director of nursing there, to create shock trauma. If the bureaucracy had tried to create it, we wouldn't have shock trauma today. We have shock trauma because of our Adams Kelly. Mm. And 90% of the people are saved. I heard you right on Yeah, that. and if he gets those helicopters, he hopes that 97% <sighs> will be saved. All right. That's great. Chris Gall, thanks.